So for those of you who missed it, Van Margera posted a series of pretty troubling videos over on Instagram and he eventually asked Dr. Phil for help. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing the situation from Bam Margera's perspective, as well as Steve-O and Brandon Novak. And then finally, we're gonna ask the question, can Dr. Phil help Bam Margera? So stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the community or in pop culture, try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, for those of you who don't know, I've been sharing over on the community tab and on Twitter and on Instagram, but I have been doing daily podcasts. I know, I work my butt off because I love you all so much. So not only am I doing daily YouTube videos, I'm also doing a daily podcast and all that stuff. So make sure that you check it out. The links will be down in the description below and follow me on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the updates. All right, so yeah, let's talk about this Bam Margera situation. It actually happened uh, within about the last week or so. I was actually out of town with my beautiful girlfriend and my son visiting her family when this went down and a lot of people were messaging me about this, especially on Instagram where all this stuff took place. So before I jump into this topic, those of you who don't know me, you might be like, who the heck is this guy and how is he qualified in any way, shape or form to discuss this subject? So allow me to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Chris. I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. My clean date is June 23rd, 2012. So yeah, about a little over a month ago, I celebrated seven years clean and sober. Not only that, but I worked in addiction treatment for a little over three years and I'm a certified life coach and I specialize in sober coaching, all right? But aside from that, part of my job and part of my own personal experience, I have had interventions done on me. I have had to do inter interventions for friends, for family members, as well as a ton of clients who have helped get into treatment as well. So I'm kind of well versed on this subject. Okay, so first, for those of you who missed it, I'm not gonna show the whole thing, but anyways, Bam posted a series of videos. You can go check them out, but they're very concerning, and this is why people were worried. Bonkers. So when people say Bam might be going crazy, they may be they're right. Let's get to their right. Let's get to my mom, which is the worst part. Everything she says is negative, and she always cuts people off and never lets them finish. She's already ready to say what she's gonna say before you're done. That means she's not listening, ever. How many times have I got you out of rehabs and paid for them? 25? Out of jail, numerous. You wrecked my $125,000 S55 Mercedes, it was my favorite. I could have put you back in jail instantly, but you just did a year in jail and I didn't want to do that to you because I'm a nice guy. Then I had a $100,000 deal with Wawa for BAM energy shots until they found out that every time Novak would go to Wawa with me in Westchester, he would steal a che chicken Steezer wrap. And they counted how many he stole because they didn't feel like calling the police for $4. I owed them over $5,000 on chicken Steezer wraps. And then they canceled my deal. So I never even got the hundred grand. I paid for every food, drink, any bar tab, anytime he got caught stealing Xanax, I'd have to throw somebody $300 to not call the police. The list goes so on and on and on that it, it's ridiculous. Even to the point where his mom disowned him. I, I don't want anything to do with it. I was the last one left. So yeah, if you want to check all of those out, feel free to go check out uh, Bam's Instagram. I recorded this on my phone about a week ago, but I'm pretty sure they're all still up there. But yeah, as you can see, like it's it's super sad. And whenever I see this happening i remember the insanity of addiction and it's it's brutal and like i can relate so much like when i was watching bam i felt like i was watching myself like the last intervention that my family had for me seven years ago which ultimately led to me getting clean and sober like it was my mom who was seven years sober at the time she's coming up on 14 years it was my dad um, and a couple other family members and I was losing it and I was screaming and yelling and calling them all sorts of names and much like you saw what Bam was doing too like I 
pass the blame on to other people. Like I called my mom names that you should never call anybody, let alone your own mother, right? And I blamed her for this. I said, had you not been an alcoholic, you know, when I was growing up, I'd be fine, right? You're the reason I'm this way. And you saw Bam Margera like talking about his mom or he talked about his friends and everything like that. And part of my addiction, a part of this disease, and part of that sickness is thinking, if this one thing would change, then I'd be fine. All of you are the reason why I drink and use. And don't you understand, if you just treated me the way that I think I should be treated, I wouldn't have to drink or use drugs, right? And like, I get it. And what we're gonna talk about at the end of this, when we're talking about how Dr. Phil's gonna help, we're gonna talk a little bit about what Bam's gonna have to do as well. But anyways, throughout Bam Margera's videos, he's talking a lot of crap about Brandon Novak. Those of you who don't know who Brandon Novak is, um, he was a pro skater, friends with Bam, and he was deep in his addiction. I watched Brandon Novak share his story. There's a YouTube video of it somewhere, and it is a powerful story. Like. Like this dude is in the program and you could tell he's working on his recovery. And like, I remember listening to him speak. I was like, dude, like that is my jam right there. And a lot of you know, you know, Steve-O, he's been sober for a while too. But anyways, like Bam talks a lot of trash about Brandon. And I had to help my best friend get sober after I got sober. And it's difficult being the friend of someone who's in their addiction when you get sober because of a few reasons. One of them is we have to separate ourselves from that person, right? Like my sobriety has to be my number one priority. Seven years ago, I had a 10% chance of living. I wasn't allowed to see my son. Like my life was a mess. So if I don't put my sobriety number one, I lose everything. So I can't put my friends, family members, I can't put a job, anything above my sobriety or I lose all of that stuff, right? And for the person who's still in their addiction, it hurts like bam like talks about how brandon just like dumps him off at a, at a rehab or whatever it is like we have to do that to protect our own recovery you know what i mean and i remember like my best friend who i eventually got you know helped get sober and he actually just celebrated four years sober too but in the beginning it was rough it was rough like because he would just accuse me of thinking i was better than him and he would talk about all the terrible things that i did in my addiction and like, he wasn't wrong. Like, I'm sure like Brandon's like, yo, like you're not wrong about, yeah, these are the things that I've done. But part of our own recovery process is making amends for those things and living in a better way so we don't repeat those mistakes. And one of the ways we do that is by staying clean. But not long after Bam went on that tirade, um, Steve-O and Brandon Novak came out and were like, yo dude, like proud of you, glad you're getting support and everything like that. And like, that's just the way you gotta do it. Like, I remember when my mom and her best friend from um, a 12 step program were interview intervening on me and I was like losing it and saying, I don't need help, I'm fine, I can do this, da 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 da. And like, I was screaming and yelling, like this was like the, the pre-intervention before the actual intervention. And they kept saying, Oh, oh, that's just your disease talking, Chris. That's your disease talking. And I was so mad. I'm like, what the, what do you mean? That's my disease talking. That's me talking. It's me. It's Chris. It's not the disease talking. But later on, like, I understood, like, the way addiction works is it takes over the, the survival part of your brain, right? The prefrontal cortex is no longer doing its job, we're not see thinking logically, we're just trying to figure out ways that we can continue living the way that we're living by destroying our lives with alcohol and drugs, right? Part of my recovery is separating my, my addiction voice, the disease voice, from like the logical, good Chris, the person I'm meant to be, right? So when I saw Bam talking like that and when I saw you know him say what Brandon Novak has said in the past or even like Brandon and Steve-O coming out in support, like they get it, like that is not actually bam that is his sickness and if you know somebody who's struggling with the disease of addiction like this is something i try to teach family members all the time 
please recognize that your loved one is not a bad person. They are a sick person. They're dealing with an illness, all right? Now, that doesn't mean like let them off the hook for everything, right? Like they still need to get well, but just know that it is their addiction talking. So anyways, Bam Margera begged Dr. Phil to help him. He says like he connects with Dr. Phil and he like feels like Dr. Phil like, you know, talks his language and gives that tough love and everything like that. And that's awesome, all right? But here's the thing. Dr. Phil cannot save Bam Margera, okay? Like, first of all, not only can Dr. Phil not save Bam Margera, but, like, Dr. Phil just, you know, links people up with, like, treatment centers. Like, Dr. Phil isn't going to personally treat Bam Margera, right? But how can all of us learn from this? Our recovery is our responsibility. And when... Seeing Bam talk, I could relate because he has so much anger built up in him, right? Like he was talking about his kid's mom. He was talking about his mom. He has so much anger towards the people in his life. And like in treatment, he's going to have to learn different strategies to let go of those things, right? Like when I was working in the treatment center, I, had to sh I shared my experience a lot because my anger my resentments towards the rest of the world, that's what kept me sick. I used to drink and use at people, right? But when I got clean and sober, something that my first sponsor taught me was, no matter how much I'm trying to change, it doesn't mean the rest of the world has to, all right? So I had to learn how to stay sober no matter what, regardless of how anybody treated me or how anybody acted. Like I had to get myself correct, right? And it's empowering too, because now there's no external circumstances that control my life. They don't depict whether or not I'm gonna pick up a drink or a drug because I take 100% responsibility for my actions. And this is something like with Bam Margera because he has been to treatment multiple times and like this is all just strictly my opinion based on my experience, but he's going to have to realize that treatment is not the cure, all right? Like addiction recovery is a marathon. It's not a sprint. A lot of people have the misconception that you just go into treatment, you get that addiction cure, like Malibu and <laughs> what is that place? Malibu something who says they found the cure for addiction or whatever. That's not how it works. This is something that we work on every single day, all right? I am seven years sober and my sobriety is something that I work on every single day. I don't have these insane uh, cravings or this obsession to get high or drunk, but every day I wake up and I remember, oh yeah, I am a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. I need to treat my illness in order to maintain the life that I have and not go back down that road. And that's something I do every single day. And the last thing I'll say is, whenever I see a celebrity battling with their addiction, I just know that they're on a really hard road because when you get rich, when you get famous, when you have all these fans, the ego is your worst enemy, right? You don't think you need anything from anybody. You don't think you need to take advice from anybody. Like, you think you are just the person at the top of the world, right? And recovery takes so much humility. I always say, the best thing that ever happened to me in my recovery was when I had this moment of clarity when I realized I don't know crap. I thought I knew everything, but I didn't know a dang thing. And I had to start taking suggestions from others in order to start improving my life. So I will be following up on this and I do hope the best for Bam. And by the way, anybody out there, if you ever need someone to talk to, like, let me know. If you have a friend, a loved one, whatever it is, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm <laughs> much like Dr. Phil, I am not going to fix you or your loved one, but I will provide you with the resources that I can or have a conversation to hopefully point you in the right direction. So be sure to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at The Rewired Soul. The links are down in the description below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who comes to my website and gets my books and all that other good stuff. You're all awesome too. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.